Welcome to Bedroom Forensics. I really hope you like the show. If you do, please subscribe to get all the latest updates. Now for today's episode, we're talking about blood spatter patterns. Now you may think you know everything from the TV show Dexter, but obviously that is very much simplified what blood spatter analysts do. And also they don't go around killing serial killers. I hope not. Anyway, the presence of blood droplets at a crime scene, their shape, the quantity and their patterns tell a story. Now, first thing first, at a crime scene, you must take a lot of pictures from all angles, close up, wide, full view of the scene and individual drop marks. Now, always use scales in any markup. If this goes to court, you definitely don't want to be left with questions. Obviously afterwards, then take some samples. To understand how we look at blood stains, you have to get to the property of blood. Our blood contains both liquids and solids. When you cut yourself, a liquid comes out, but it does quickly coagulate, except for people with haemophilia. If you find a blood clot in a blood stain spatter, it can indicate that the attack was prolonged or that the victim was bleeding for some time after the injury occurred. Now, bloods can leave the body in many different ways, depending on the type of injury inflicted. It can flow, drip, spray, spurt, gush, or just ooze from the wounds. Get a thesaurus out. Now, blood stains are classified into three basic types. Passive stains, transfer stains, Passive stains include drops, flows and pools and typically result from gravity acting on an injured body. Transfer stains result from objects coming into contact with existing blood stains and leaving wipes, swipes or pattern transfers behind, such as a bloody shoe print, a hand mark or a smear from a body being dragged. Impact stains result from blood projecting through the air and are usually seen as spatter, but also include gushes, splashes and arterial spurts. Now, the characteristics of blood spatter depend on the speed at which the blood leaves the body and the type of force applied to the blood source. High velocity spatter, like a gunshot wound, will have tiny droplets and low velocity, like a punch, has large, slow drops. Now, some spatter patterns include cast off spatter, when an object swung in an arc flings blood onto nearby surfaces. You can see from the arc the direction of the object from the tail of the blood spatter. Many arcs mean many blows. A traveling drip. They include drips of blood from, say, a knife carried through a scene to flicked off blood from a victim or suspect's hair as they run all of which can leave some really bizarre patterns. Arterial spray, pretty much it is what it is, a severed artery. Now this is a fast one, depending on how fast your heart pumps the blood, it propels it out of the body and forms a large arcing pattern. A new pattern is created for each time the heart pumps. Expirated spatter is usually caused by blood from an internal injury mixed with air from the lungs being expelled through the nose or mouth or an injury to the airway or lungs. Expirated spatter tends to form a very fine mist due to the pressure exerted by the lungs moving air out of the body. The shape of the stain changes depending on the angle of impact, velocity, distance travelled and type of surface impacted. From a great height, the drop will have a crown effect. From an angle, the leading edge will be round and the far side irregular, giving us a direction. By measuring the width and length of the stain, the angle of impact can be calculated. Let's do some math. The angle of the impact is equal to the arc sin of the drop's width divided by its length. Hmm. Hope you got that. Basically, following the angle back to the origin, we can determine position of victim and assailant. Now, too much blood can disguise spatter or make stain patterns unrecognisable. Conversely, too little blood, just one or two drops, will likely yield little or new usable information. Now, there are many more complications when analysing blood pattern. Gunshots, for example, have their own chapter, and we didn't touch on latent stains that have to be seen with luminal or light sources, 
Although that was in another episode. As with all evidence at a crime scene, blood pattern analysis can be used to support or confirm the findings of other evidence and it's unusual to use it just on its own. Anyway, please do subscribe to my channel, that's all for today. Uh, if you want to see something or learn about something, then why not let me know? Until next time.